Republicans split on strategy to make Biden pay a political price for Afghanistan while a growing chorus of rank-and-file Republicans have called for Biden's resignation or impeachment over the administration's disastrous exit from Afghanistan. Key leaders and others in the party have struck a more measured tone for the moment. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy even pushed back against some of his members during a private conference call Thursday night, suggesting that the demands for Biden's immediate ouster are counterproductive and saying the focus right now needs to be on getting Americans out of Afghanistan safely. But he also promised to pressure the administration. Promise you there is going to be a reckoning, McCarthy, who spoke to Biden by phone on Thursday, told members on the GOP conference call, according to sources. We are going to hold every single person accountable. Republicans across the board have been eager to keep the chaotic withdrawal in the spotlight and believe it will be a permanent stain on Biden's presidency. But GOP leaders know that getting too political too quickly after Thursday's attacks risks looking craven and disrespectful of the 13 US troops who lost their lives, with flags still being flown at half-staff and the possibility that Biden will travel to Delaware's Dover Air Force Base whenever the fallen soldiers' remains are returned. With Republicans in the minority, but only five seats away from winning back the House next year, McCarthy has his eyes on the long game as opposed to trying to score short-term political points. But it's a tough balancing act for the California Republican, who faces an increasingly agitated right flank, even one of McCarthy's top deputies lit into Biden, calling him unfit to serve as president. Joe Biden has blood on his hands, Representative Elise Stefanik of New York, the number three House Republican, tweeted shortly after reports surfaced of casualties from the airport explosions. This horrific national security and humanitarian disaster is solely the result of Joe Biden's weak and incompetent leadership. He is unfit to be commander-in-chief. Even before the airport attack, Republicans had been vowing to investigate Biden's messy withdrawal from Afghanistan if they seize back power next year, with some lawmakers floating the idea of a select committee on Afghanistan. In the minority, there is far less that Republicans can do to pressure the White House. For now, though, they are asking for information from the administration, firing off letters and taking steps that would help with future probes. And with some Democrats openly critical of the administration and joining in on GOP calls to extend August 31st withdrawal date, Republicans see potential areas for bipartisanship. Democratic leaders in Congress said they were monitoring the situation, advocated for securing the airport to help Americans and Afghan allies evacuate, and pushed back on the Republicans' criticism. Right now, American heroes are risking and giving their lives to execute an extraordinarily dangerous evacuation, and the minority leader wants to defund the mission and tie the commander-in-chief's hands in the middle of the most dangerous days of the operation," tweeted Drew Hamill, Pelosi's deputy chief of staff, referring to McCarthy. What's not going to help evacuate American citizens is more empty stunts and distraction from the minority leader who sat idly by as President Trump proudly negotiated with the Taliban. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.